Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the Ladder of Lansink. Um, this ladder is named after a Dutch politician, Art Lansink, and in international jargon is also referred to as the Waste Pyramid. This waste pyramid can be used to subcategorize different forms of waste management. And when you use it um, in the right way, when you put it to good use, so to say, uh, it can help um, to uh, create a more circular type of economy. So in waste hierarchy, there are most preferred options to deal with waste and least preferred options to deal with waste. In the waste pyramid, um, you see a composition of three major parts in dealing with waste. And the first uh, is, is on top of the waste pyramid, which is the most preferred way of dealing with waste, which is avoiding production in the first place. Um, the second part in, is uh, a stage where we deal with waste at the product level. So that could be either we reuse products or we recycle products. And the third part deals with waste, uh, considering it as truly waste. So somehow we dispose of products in a way that could be uh, through energy recovery. So we burn it first and then we recover some energy uh, from its burning uh, process, the incarnation process. Um, and it's waste in terms of CO2 pollution, or um, somehow it ends up in a landfill and it lays there uh, until forever, so to say. Uh, obviously, this is the least preferred way in dealing with waste. So let's discuss avoidance of production first. The idea is that we do not need that many products uh, as we consume on a daily basis. And this means that both companies and consumers can do something about it. Uh, consumers can do something about it by simply uh, purchasing less products, being more aware of the fact that they can actually live a very good life while using less products than they used to. So this could really sound like very bad news for, for companies who want to sell as many products as possible. Uh, but at the same time, um, well, there is something in it for business as well, um, especially when they are able to introduce, for instance, smart technology that helps consumers to avoid consumption. Um, so, for instance, um, uh, smart technology that can be used to heat the house or to um, turn off the radiator um, when it is in line in sync with um, um, people arriving at home and leaving the house again. Um, such uh, uh, smart technology can be sold and can be sold for a profit, obviously, but can also at the same time help reducing the amount of consumption. At the product level, we have a distinction between reuse and recycling. In a nutshell, reusing a product means that you use the same product again, like giving it a second life, if you like, in exactly the same capacity, with the same function. In case of recycling, you consider something that normally would be considered waste as new basic material for another product. So the functionality of the product changes in the process. A wonderful example of reuse could be the fact that I purchased this beautiful book written by H.G. Wells, an old British author. He's long dead now, you may know him from War of the Worlds and so on. Um, this particular book is called The Sea Lady. It dates back to 1926 and I purchased it on a second-hand bookstore. Um, so the book in essence gets a new life uh, in the same capacity as a book. I'm reading it as a book and it's the same book. So it's just secondhand product, basically. Now, it would be different if this would be recycled. Then I would not throw this book away, but I will use this waste, so the paper, um, as new basic materials for, for instance, new sheets of paper. Now, in the case of recycling, we could make a distinction between upcycling and downcycling. In the case of downcycling, the economic value um, will be decreased along the process. In case of upcycling, the economic value will increase um, as a result of the process. Uh, a good example would be, for instance, if you're able to develop buildings that suck in CO2 pollution, you can use that as um, a carbon, uh, which you get out of it, which you can uh, filter out of the process, and you can use that as basic materials for diamonds, for instance. Well, obviously then the value increases uh, as a result of the recycling process, the upcycling process. Until now, um, the way we could deal with uh, waste, the waste management uh, stages, 
can potentially contribute to uh, a more circular economy. So the avoidance of production, the reuse of pro products and the recycling of uh, uh, waste uh, can all contribute to a more circular economy. The last stage of the waste pyramid does not contribute to a circular economy and instead um, uh, maintains a linear form of an economy where we move from um, production to use and consumption to waste and that's about it. Um, we make a distinction between energy recovery and disposal. In the case of energy recovery, we at least do not directly throw something away, but we burn it first. It's an incarnation process through which we can recover at least some energy um, so we can make some households run on electricity, for instance. But um, as a result of the incarnation process, we have CO2 pollution, which can be considered as waste. In case of um, disposal in its own right, um, products simply are thrown away and they end up uh, in a landfill um, and that obviously is the worst way of dealing with waste. So I hope that after watching this video you know a little bit more um, about the ladder of Lansing or the waste pyramid and that you are able to recall that um, um, avoidance of production is the best way to deal with waste according to this uh, methodology. Um, then we have reuse and recycling that deals with waste at the product level, which can also contribute to a more circular type of economy. And we have energy recovery and um, disposal, um, which does not necessarily contribute to a circular economy. It maintains a linear form of an economy um, and it's not very good for the environment, obviously. Thank you very much for watching.